Welcome to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Thanks so much for joining me as I share with you my responses to the tag, my three top purchases of 2020 and one regret. Thank you so much to Patricia for tagging me in to do this video. I will link her video below. Patricia um, has a wonderful collection and a really lovely persona in her videos. I'd really encourage you to go and see her channel and she seems like such a generous person and gives you great feedback and comments um, on your videos and yeah i really love interacting with patricia so thanks for tagging me patricia um, i didn't really have to think too hard about this tag to be honest it's a very very lazy video from me and i'm sure if you have been around for a little while um, you'll know exactly what i'm going to pick for my top three however Picking my regret was a little more challenging. So let's get into the video. My first top purchase for 2020, hands down, has to be oh, the carry bag. Um, very unexpected. This Fendi Sex in the City Purple Rain Baguette uh, just blew my mind. I walked into the store. The mannequin was holding this. I met with my sales associate Bessie for the first time and she handed it to me and in that moment any willpower I had was gone. Uh, I walked around the block for about 10 minutes and went back and said I need to take her home. This bag um, has been hand beaded and sequined like let me just show you the edges it is insane. Um, and it's got this beautiful, beautiful glittery Fendi buckle. On the inside, um, there is the um, wide strap. And I've actually, look at me, I've got a little bag um, butler, handbag butler in here to take care of this. Inside, she's lined with this beautiful gold silk lining. And uh, there is a stamp inside saying Fendi baguette. Now, not all baguettes have this inside of them. Uh, so that is just a wee bit special. Um, these bags are pretty simple bags, but gee, they pack some punch. I rarely wear this one with the strap. I have to say that um, this is a bag that I carry handheld, and I really enjoyed carrying this bag for my recent 40th birthday, uh, and I'll insert some pictures of me styling it up. Um, I wore it with a pair of gold Gucci sandals and a beautiful... Um, Marquesa Notti uh, summer dress and felt like an absolute Italian queen and uh, yeah absolute top pick no regrets whatsoever on this baby. Also have to do a shout out to Narelle who I met at Fendi recently over Christmas when I was wearing this little Fendi mini and she walked in wearing this exact same bag and uh, anyway we got to chatting and she had bought the first bag that was sent to the Brisbane boutique and they consequently were sent another one and I was the second sucker so um we, there are two of us now in Brisbane with this bag, which is pretty special considering that it was such a limited edition. So, hey, Narelle, if you happen to watch this video. I'm interested to know, have you guessed my other top purchases? Did the Fendi Baguette make your list? Um, let's see if you can get two for two. My second top purchase of 2020 was my Fendi Peekaboo Mini in the Celeria with the Romano leather. This bag, honestly, um, I don't know about you, but I see a lot of videos on Fendi Peekaboos, and I did um, before, and I it was never on my list as a result of those videos. I just don't think they look very good in videos. I think you need to see them in person because I would never have bought a peekaboo on the basis of um, seeing, now who did I see? Was it Fashionably Amy, um, Mel Soldera? They have like the more stiff versions and I know they absolutely loved their peekaboos and defenders, but I would watch their videos and go, oh, it's just a bag, like there's nothing particularly interesting about it. I don't think you get it until you see them in person and you see the um, craftsmanship and I'm, I'm sure that's probably the same as Hermes and I don't have any Hermes because 
I haven't been bitten. I haven't seen it. I haven't touched it. I haven't experienced um, an Hermes handbag. So, you know, there's still time. Anyway, I'm like, to me, there's nothing that beats this bag in terms of functionality. Um, it's so chic. As I said in a previous video, for me, my style is done but undone. I don't like polished perfection. I prefer things that look a little bit, you know, messy. Um, I think it's more relatable. I think it's more comfortable. Um, and certainly this bag has been an absolute winner for me. And I didn't really get to use it for the first three months that I bought it because it was winter here and I was wearing a lot of dark clothes and I was worried about color transfer. But geez, I've given it some wear over the past few months. And after buying this strap to go with it, I mean, these two, um, yeah, I, I have no regrets. And obviously I bought the black one too, but I can only have three top picks this year. So there's a spoiler, the black one did not make my top three. Now this really is a test. If you've got two for two, beware, number three is coming up. And if you know me, you will have picked this. And I wanna know if you got these top three. The final top pick for my 2020 purchases is my Gucci, oh, how do we say this? Glazed Wicker Linear Sestino Bag. Um, this bag, uh, it just makes me smile. It goes with everything. This is an amazing neutral for summer, especially if you live somewhere where summer means summer, as in there's more warm, clear days than there are rainy days or um you know a season that switches between highs and lows it's pretty consistent here within between 28 degrees and 36 degrees celsius so that's and rain here and there but pretty much this is a bag that you could wear every single day and because it is glazed you could wear it um and get a little sprinkle of um rain on it and it'll be fine she gets so many compliments uh, in fact the other day um, and if you haven't heard already I'll, I'll include my unboxing video um, of this bag and my review as well but um, I only paid $1,500 for this like that anyway crazy it was pre-loved but watch the videos you'll get the information a friend of mine uh, who I was talking to the other day <laughs> um, sold me a Zimmerman blouse and uh, she said, oh, um, you know, that uh, that Gucci bag would go perfectly with your outfit. Um, and I sent to her and she said, I think you've got that, don't you? I know you do because I hate you because you have it. And I'm like, yeah, here it is. And I sent her a little picture and she said, oh, it's perfect. I hate you. Um, hey, Tash. Uh, so, yeah. Um, definitely in my top three. So I'm pretty stoked with my top three. Now the one regret, let's get back down to earth here. Um, when I was thinking about the regrets, obviously I have um, recently uploaded my three worst luxury purchases, but that was of all time. This is of 2020. So when I think about regrets, it was pretty hard actually because of the amount of time that we had this year I did a lot of research um, but there is one piece that I think would I have bought it had I have done more research and the answer is probably no as much as I love the color and everything and that is my Gucci Affidia, um card case now the reason that this falls into my one luxury regret is it's really not functional <laughs> it's beautiful it's a beautiful piece it's got the floral blooms it has the grain ribbon it's got the gg and it's a beautiful summer color like the finish on this i showed this to my essay at louis vuitton the other day and she said wow the finish is really beautiful um she was really impressed but you can't just get things in and out of it easily. Like, 
that's one card in one card slot and it is so hard and I've been overstuffing it to try and stretch it out a little bit um, in the hope that it will become easier to use and I've managed to do so in the middle section um, which you know is useful um, but yeah these side sections here um, or the outside sections are just really hard to use and I find I put it in my bag and then I just use Apple Pay because it's too hard to get the cards out. So, yeah, that would have to be my regret. But that's my puppy dog. But when I look at these two together, like they were meant to be. So not everything that you buy has to be absolutely beautiful and functional. Sometimes, as we know in fashion, you've got to give up function or comfort for beauty. And... Uh, I'm happy to take a hit for the team, if that's my only regret for this year. So did you pick my top three purchases? Did you pick my regret? I'm interested to know. And tell me what your top purchases of this year were. I think a lot of us did a lot more shopping than this year than we expected that we might in the midst of a global pandemic. I have had fun filming this. Thanks again to Patricia for tagging me. I am going to tag some people in the description box down below. If you have liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.